Well, what gives us flow? Our appetite, right? What gives us our appetite? Our endocannabinoids, a little part of our brain makes endocannabinoids that hits receptors on nerve cells in that little part of our brain, and that gives you the munchies. So every time you get hungry, you're getting hungry because your body is giving you some pot, and that pot is giving you the munchies. So the plant is just imitating the way your body works. And what is true, and undeniably true, is that all of our body systems, everything in your body is controlled by the endocannabinoids. It's a very primal homeostatic mechanism, balancing mechanism. All right? So it's the food that's creating the imbalance, and it's our endocannabinoids that created that imbalance, but then it's our endocannabinoids throughout our body that's trying to restore balance using that extra flow that we now have because we ate. All right? So, one of, it turns out, and we don't have time to go into it now, but one of the basic things that that's characterizes life all life, all levels, all right, is balancing acts, where we oscillate between things. Awake, sleep, right? Breathe in, breathe out. Heart contract, heart release. Menstrual cycles, you have it, you don't have it, all right? All of our, our EEGs, our EKGs are all oscillations, all right? And it turns out that one of the fundamental characteristics of the redox flow that's in us is that we generate inflammation, we generate inflammatory biochemistry, and then we have other things that balance that inflammatory biochemistry. What are those other things? Endocannabinoids. All right? So other terms for these things? Free radicals. That's the inflammatory response. And harm reduction, essentially, minimizing harm, the endocannabinoid system to counteract the negative effects of the free radicals. <coughs> so essentially, our endocannabinoids counteract the friction of life. The free radicals are the friction of life. They impede the harmony of the flow that's going through us by creating unpredictable, incoherent changes that basically screw it up. It's biochemical friction. And it's the endocannabinoid system, I call it the oil of life, because it lubricates that friction. And in, in, in essence, and this is so mind-boggling, it's really an anti-aging drug. And it, it's an anti-aging drug in the sense that what is aging is the accumulated uh, decrease in the harmony of our flow caused by all of these free radical changes. It's the friction, biochemical friction that's accumulated in us. So, are the current biochemical thermostats, those set points of where we turn on inflammation and turn off inflammation, are they set correctly? And my answer is no, because when do we set them? We set them over the past millions of years, and it's really only been in the past relatively few years that we've undergone profound changes in our environment. I mean, just look what's happened since the introduction of computers, or before that, the gasoline engine, all right? I mean, these are what have changed us over the past, say, century and a half, and there have been consequences to this. We no longer die of infectious diseases as the main cause of death in, you know, quote, civilized societies that only arrest their marijuana users. All right, I've got to wrap this up here. I've got to really hurry now. So is consciousness dependent on genetics and is it selected for? Intrinsically, some people have above average levels of endocannabinoid activity. It's regulating everything. One of the things it regulates is open-mindedness, the ability to learn new information and replace old information with the new. So what are the effects of that? It's what I call blips and flips. Backward-looking people versus forward-looking people. Here we have the the difference. It's a difference in the philosophy of how they interact, the things they do, and look at the impact. It doesn't impact just them, it impacts all of us. You know? So what's the difference? The difference really is the fate of mankind. And why do I say that? Because we can no longer evolve fast enough. Our set points were set in the past. We make too much inflammation in general. That's what causes heart disease, cancer, autoimmune diseases, neurological cognitive dysfunction. What protects against that? Marijuana. Marijuana protects against brain damage. It doesn't cause brain damage. It only causes brain damage to those people who, hopefully we'll see here, Oops. I jumped too far, who are below average in their endocannabinoid activity. Because they don't like to get high because they don't have the biochemical machinery to embrace it. 
It's a stressor for them. Those that like it, embrace it. And are here, right? <laughs> the difference really is that one is a very much more aggressive, closed kind of behavior, and the other is a more open, cooperative behavior. If you're backwards looking, below average in endocannabinoid activity with respect to that one phenotype, well then you tend to agree with other people who are backward looking because they have a common vision. It's what already occurred. Whereas if you're forward looking, what does that really mean? It means optimistic. That's one of the characteristics of people who use marijuana. They're optimistic. What does optimism mean? It means you look into the unknowns of the future and you embrace the unknown because you are ready to adapt and change to whatever that's going to demand of you. All right? So, in the world today, and changing our environment as rapidly as we do, things like pollution, thermal, chemical pollution, whatever, warfare, nuclear weapons, all of this stuff, we have to replace the blips that have run our society. And, and the reason they run our society is because they're backwards looking. They have more common consensus. What do forward looking people do? They look into the unknown and they agree to disagree. You can have your ideas, I can have my ideas. I can smoke a joint, you don't have to smoke a joint. Think of how pathological the backward looking people are. I don't want to smoke a joint, and if you do it, I'm going to throw you in jail. You know, what kind of, you know, clearly there's a fundamental issue here. You know, I think we not only have to end prohibition, I think we have to reverse prohibition. I think we need 60 years where you've got to test positive on a piss test. <laughs> I think we need a little change here. So this is the ending here. Give peace a chance. That's what we need. We need, for the sake of survival of mankind, we've got to replace flips with flips. I believe Obama is a flip. And George Bush was clearly a blip. <laughs> so what we need, we can't evolve fast enough. The only solution is that we need more cannabis. We have to consume more cannabis as mankind in order for mankind to live longer as an individual by inhibiting age-related diseases and by creating the kind of world that will foster cooperativity instead of aggression and antagonism. Thank you.